Hi guys, it's me Terry of the Yarn Joy Podcast. Welcome back to another crochet along. So for this crochet along, we're going to be making Esther the Elephant. It is another awesome pattern by Jess Huff. I will pop in a picture right here where you can see what Esther the Elephant is going to look like. Okay, so I'm going to do this crochet along like I did Dash the Deer, where I'm not going to be doing an actual line by line tutorial since this is not my pattern. But I am going to film each Monday, I'm film and release a uh, tips video, I guess you could call it, where I'm going to uh, work on one section of the tutorial I'll work it like a week ahead of time that way if I see anything that I want to point out as far as tips in the construction of the elephant then I will let you know um, in the that week's tip uh, tip video <laughs> okay so what I'm using for my you can of course make Esther the elephant any color you want to uh, actually you can even do any weight yarn or um, hook that you would like. What I am, I'll let you know what I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my elephant gray, and then some, uh, I'll show you the color for the bottom of his feet in a minute. Okay, <laughs> so Premier Yarns Anti Pilling Everyday Worsted, that's what I'm going to be using. It is a four weight yarn. Um, which is a worsted weight. It's a kind of a light worsted weight, I guess you would say. Uh, this is an anti-pilling, so I think it'll be good for amigurumi because you can um, wash it, and it's supposed to keep the the its look of looking new. <laughs> okay, so I'm, that's what I'm using. I'm also using uh, now. If you've been following my regular uh, Yarn Joy podcast episodes, you know that I'm making a Granny Square blanket that's going to be going along with this Esther the Elephant as a gift. Uh, it's going to be a baby baby shower gift. And so um, in that Granny Square blanket that I'm making that's going to go along with the elephant, I am using this... Um, Baby B Sweet Delight. I got it at uh, Hobby Lobby on clearance um, a couple of years ago, I think. And this is called Blue Camo. And so I had one of my awesome viewers suggest to use this color, since I'm doing this in the blanket, to use this colorway for the bottoms of the, the feet. The, the arms and legs <laughs> on the elephant and so that way it would uh, go along with the blanket and I thought that was an awesome idea so that's what I'm going to do uh, but of course you can pick out whatever colors uh, you want to use okay so also I am using a size E crochet hook which is a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and I believe that's what the pattern calls for but of course if you're using a lighter weight yarn you may want to use an even smaller hook if you're using a heavier weight yarn or if you're a tight crocheter you may want to go up a hook size or two uh, just whatever you're comfortable with you just want to make sure that what you use will uh, be make a dense fabric where you won't see the stuffing through the holes once you once you stuff it. I'm just using regular uh, polyfill, fiber fill uh, stuffing for my uh, elephant. I am using the five millimeter safety eyes that the pattern calls for. Uh, let's see what else do you need? You're going to need uh, five um, markers, stitch markers. One to mark your progress as you're going around each round because it is worked in a spiral. Uh, you do not join every round and so you want a marker to be able to uh, mark your first stitch of the round. You also want two markers where you're going to uh, mark where the eyes are going to go and two markers where you're going to mark where you need to attach the ears. Okay. Okay, so for the first section of this crochet along, uh, let's do the head, which it starts with the trunk, and it, then it progresses and it you know, enlarges and, and it makes the head. So the trunk and the head is this one piece. So we're going to do that piece 
uh, including inserting the eyes and also make go ahead and make the ears and then we'll be sewing the ears onto the head. And so that will be part one of this crochet along. Okay, so as I've mentioned before, I'm going to be a week ahead of you. So that way I can see if I need to talk about anything in the pattern that I thought I think might be helpful. Okay, so let's just get right into it and I'll show you what I've done so far. Okay. So here is my head so far. It's partially stuffed, as you can see. I do have the places marked for the ears. Uh, I went ahead and inserted the eyes. Now the eyes are not that I had marked them first. And then I took the markers out after I got got it uh, almost to the point where I'm closing it. It, it. it shows in the pattern, tells you when to insert the eyes. And so that's where I am in the pattern. Um, and then I went ahead and inserted the eyes, but I do not have the backings on the eyes yet. Let me see those are the backings. Um, because in her pattern, she does show tell, talk about um, indenting the eyes. Is that what you call it? <laughs> Making indentions, yeah. And she does have instructions in her pattern on how she makes the indentions. I'm going to go ahead and do the indentions here with you or to show you how I do it. So uh, you may want to do it that way. It may even be, ex well, I don't think it's exactly the way Jess does it in her patterns, but it's just another way you could do it, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's why I have not uh, tightened down the eyes yet, okay? Put the backs on, okay? So I've done that. I have went ahead and I've made the ears. Here is one of them. That's what it's going to look like. Um, right before you sew it on, okay? And uh, I have gotten another one, um, but I'm gonna show you, I've got it started, oh, I've done all the crocheting part, but I'm gonna show you how to fold it, and uh, then we'll go ahead and attach it to the head in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so that's what I've done so far. Now, I will say that I had read comments about from other people. I don't remember what website, if it was a, I think it was a Facebook group maybe that I was on and people were talking about making Esther the elephant. Some people were talking about how that the trunk was um, coming out twisted, I think. And I think even in Jess's pattern, she talks about having to possibly kind of twist your your trunk, the trunk a little bit to get it shaped the way you want it. Okay, so I did have somebody comment, uh, one of one of my viewers on, uh, on the YouTube channel here, commented about that she had made this pattern and she said that she was having trouble with the, the trunk uh, twisting I think or coming out crooked or something not centered maybe and so she said that she altered hers she did not change the stitch count per row when, per round when she was making the trunk she just changed I believe she changed where some of the increases were uh, around each round and she said that when she did it that way that she didn't have any trouble with her trunk twisting and so she was uh, not sweet enough to send me an email and she uh, gave me her notes on what she did different on the rounds making the trunk to so then it won't come out twisted and so I went ahead and followed her uh, her instructions just because I, there were so many comments I had heard here and there where people said that uh, they were having a little bit of trouble with the shaping of the trunk and her name is uh, Jennifer Kennedy so I did send her message back after I made mine and as you can see I think the, the trunk turned out very well I didn't have any trouble with forming it or you know it coming out crooked or anything so I'm very happy with it and so I messaged her back and I thanked her for sending me her notes and I asked her if I could share them and she said that of that I could and so down in the description box first I'm going to link the pattern the pattern link on where you can get the pattern so that way you can follow the pattern 
instructions along with, you know, you can read the pattern and follow it um, as you're making the elephant. But also, I'm going to include the rounds that she changed, that Jennifer changed on hers to keep it from twisting. So if you have trouble with your trunk twisting, then may, you may want to try Jennifer's, um, the way Jennifer did it, and see if that solves your problem. Otherwise, then go ahead and follow Jess, Jess's uh, instructions. I will type out those instructions, or well, I'll put them down below in the description box if you want to follow uh, the instructions for that trunk um, and see if that helps you out. Okay, so let's see, what else do I need to tell you? I think that was really it. And then it's about the trunk. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, I've got I started uh, stuffing mine. I was uh, just kind of real careful about putting stuffing down into the trunk and tried to shape it the way I wanted it to be. And then I went ahead and stuffed it, uh, got some stuffing in there to help me shape, kind of help shape uh, my elephant's head so that way I can do the indentions for the eyes and um, it'll kind of help me know how much to pull it in pull the indentions in okay so now I am ready to do the indentions so this is the way I do mine I just take a strand of the same color yarn as the main uh, color of your elephant you know it's it's pretty probably 20 inches long or something you know pretty good amount two feet let's say and then I'm gonna take oh and you will need a yarn needle let me get my yarn needle out of my little holder here Okay, and then you also want to use some straight pins so then you can pin the ears on uh, when we get ready to pin those on to sew them on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and yarn up my needle here. Okay, and now this is how I'm going to do my indentions. And you don't have to, you can keep them flat if you prefer and just uh, finish stuffing up the head and and follow the uh, instructions on closing them up um, that's no problem just it's whatever your preference is okay but the way I like to do the indentions uh, is I yarn up my needle and then I insert the needle into the inside of the head and I want to come out right where in the, in the in the hole where I've got the eyes, you know, where you have it's the hole that you're the, you're the stitch that you marked uh, where the eyes are going to go. That's where you would bring the needle up. Okay, I'm just holding that space open with the since I already inserted the eye there. If you want to insert the eye like I'm doing and then uh, just have the eye already there, you can do that. Just come up uh, where, where it's going to be underneath where the eye is going to be covering up. Okay, so pull it through, but don't pull it all the way through, okay? You just want to pull the yarn through, okay? And now I'm going to take my yarn needle off. And I'm going to take the other end of that same strand. And I'm going to put my yarn needle onto uh, yarn up my needle with that end and then I'm going to do the same thing okay so now I'm going to go over onto the other side going into the inside of the head and then I'm going to come out in the stitch that I have marked that I had marked or where I've already inserted the eye Okay, and pull the yarn through. Okay, okay, so now I've got the yarn coming out from each eye, you underneath where the eye is going to be covering that. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, take the yarn that's on the needle, and now I'm going to go back in. But don't go through the same stitch. Go through the go through like next to where you came out, you know, because you don't just want to unstitch what you did. <laughs> but you want to go back into the center of the eye and come out the hole, like that. Okay, and then now go ahead and take the yarn off your needle. Okay, you can see down in there. Well, you can see. See, there's the loop. So it's going. It came out each eye hole. And now I went right next to the stitch it came out of. I went back in 
not the same one because that would just be un unstitching what you did <laughs> and then I came out the hole uh, in the back okay and now I'm going to yarn up the other side and do the same thing to go take the yarn back inside the head but remember don't go through the same hole that you came out of um, just go right like right next to it and then go back into the head again just like that see now you can undo your uh, take the needle off because uh, of the yarn you don't need that now okay so now you can take these two ends and you can pull them which will make the eyes indent see that you're just pulling you're pulling that string together and now the way I do my indentions I don't I like them indented a little bit it just kind of gives the the amigurumi some little character but I do not want to do it very drastically you know I don't want the eyes to be sunk in like really far like that you know I don't I don't like to do it that way I really barely just kind of get them indented just a little bit okay And so I just kind of play with the adjusting, you know, as much, however much I want to pull it until I like the way that the eye is looking, okay? And then all you're going to do with these two ends is you're going to tie them in, you're going to tie them in a knot to kind of secure them so then they will stay, the indentions that you made for the eyes will stay in, the, in the, that position, okay? So I just kind of look at both sides and see if I like them, if it's about even, the indentions are even. Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And then I'll just tie it in a knot. That's it and then since I got them tied in a knot now now I'm gonna go ahead and take the backs of my eyes here the backs of the uh, safety eyes and I'm gonna go ahead and apply them on there and lock them down okay I got that one on and then get the other one on Okay. You can kind of hear them snap when they clip, they go on. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish stuffing the rest of the head. And I just stuff little section, you know, not huge globs at a time, but just kind of um, little pieces at a, t at a time. And I just kind of shape the head the way I'm wanting it to look. Whoops, it rolled away. <laughs> and those ends where you tied you just can stuff the, that on the inside, okay? Okay, so now I forgot to tell you, but uh, the instructions, the alternate alternative instructions, I guess you'd say, for the trunk that you want to if if you need to do them a little different to keep if your trunk is twisting on you then uh, it only it, it starts the different instructions start on row eight around eight and it goes from round eight to round 19 so one through seven you do exactly like Jess Huff's pattern and then if your trunk is giving you trouble then you can instead of doing 8 through 19 of Jess's pattern then just follow 8 through 19 of the uh, rows that are in the description box below and then after you finish 19 then on round 20 you go back to the original pattern so try that out to see if it helps if your trunk doesn't doesn't is not twisting on you then go ahead and follow Jess's patterns whatever is works for you <laughs> okay so 
now I'm going to finish stuff, stuffing the head the way I want it, shaped, you know, and then uh, I'm going to continue on, uh, let's see, I am on row, I just finished 39, after you row, finish row 39, around 39, that's when they tell you to go ahead and uh, deal with the eyes, and so uh, I'm going to be starting on round 40, and I need to do round, uh, and that starts decreasing the head. And so I'm going to go ahead and start on round 40, and then I'm going to finish, which is actually uh, round 40 to 43. And then uh, I'm just going to be follow the, following the instructions on closing up the head. And uh, so I will meet you back when I am... Uh, closing up the head <laughs> okay so I have one more round of decreases to go before I finish off my head and so now and I have stuffed it the way I want it I think and so now what I want to do is a little tip that I like to do when I'm finishing off an amigurumi because the when you start decreasing the stitches kind of get pulled and a lot of times you can see the stuffing through the stitches see how the stitches are more opened up so I like to take some of the yarn and then the same color that you made the head with and I like to stuff the top part with the same colored yarn and when you do that it helps to uh, not have that white stuffing show through I think so I just keep taking bits of the yarn oops, <laughs> and cut it off and then continue to stuff the opening okay with that same color I think it helps a lot to do that if you have the uh, yarn to spare Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start uh, that last round. And if I, right before the hole closes all together, if I feel like I need to insert some more of this gray yarn, I can do that um, before I close it up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this last round. All it is is a decrease all the way around in each stitch. So you end up with six stitches and then I will come right back and we will fasten off. Okay, so I just finished the last decrease stitch and so I'm gonna go into the next stitch and do a slip stitch so I can fasten my yarn off. Slip stitch and then I just pull it, pull it all the way through, okay? And now I'm going to take my yarn needle and go ahead and yarn up the needle with the end of that tail I have quite a long tail here. I cut it off because I wanted to get to the ball of yarn to um, stuff in the top of the the head. And so I have a, quite a big tail here, but I'll just work it all in there and I'll end up stuffing it um, into the body. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go around that circle a little bit, uh, those, la those the last stitches to uh, close up that circle or the hole all the way. Okay. And now I'm gonna start going inside, into the head, into the body and coming out, of the, uh, you know, away from the hole there to start getting, um, to hide the yarn inside the head, <laughs> the ta the yarn tail. Okay. Okay. 
okay? So you just do that a few times, and then you can uh, go ahead and cut your tail. So let me come out one other place here, okay? And take my scissors and snip that off, okay? And then you can insert your yarn, your needle close to where the little t stubby tail is sticking out, and then just kind of wave your little yarn needle underneath where that tail was sticking out and it'll pull it in. Okay, so there is my head ready for the ears. Okay, so I've got the ears marked with some stitch markers here. So uh, let's go on to the ears. Okay, so when you do the ears, you're going to end up with a circle. Okay, and I just finished off. I believe I have 84 stitches all the way around, but it ends up being a circle, and I fasten off. And you want to leave a very long tail. She said like, uh, like a five feet tail, you know, because you're going to end up folding your ta your circle in half and then down, and then you need have to stitch all that opening uh, together. Besides using needing a tail to sew it onto your head, so. Uh, go ahead and leave yourself a pretty, you know, a really long tail. Okay, and then the way I like to fold it is, is you can kind of tell which side is the back side versus the the right side, which is the side that was facing you when you were stitching. And so I want that to make sure that is on the outside. This underside is will be the inside of the ear. Okay, so with the yarn tail at the top of the circle. I just fold it in half like I'm making a taco. Okay? Okay. Now, go ahead and get the end of your yarn tail, that long tail, and go ahead and thread your yarn needle. Okay? Now, you want to locate the very center uh, of the magic ring where you started. Okay? And that's where you want to insert your needle. Okay, so go ahead and from the top, okay, we're going to insert the needle into the very center stitch or like round one of the of the round, okay? So I'm going to insert it right there, okay? And then I'm going to pull that all the way out. And that's going to fold over See, it's going to fold over that ear, okay? Because you want that corner to be touching the um, where your magic circle was, okay? Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to start doing stitches. Okay, you can go flatten it down. You're going to start putting stitches in to close up that that opening, see? And we're going to do that all the way around the length of the ear, okay? Just going through stitches on both sides of that circle to uh, pull that together, okay? You can do a, a, a wrap it over like you're doing a whip stitch, or you can just do like I did. You go under, go through the both layers of stitches and then come out the other side and then from that side you came out of just go one stitch over and go under and go back through both layers of stitches and end up on the other side and you just kind of do that back and forth until your ear is all closed up okay so I'm going to be I'm gonna do that until I get my ear closed, just back and forth, okay? And so your ear is going to end up looking like this, see? It's attached there at that magic circle. This part is open at the moment, it just folded over. And then I ran the stitch all the way through both thicknesses, all the way down the edge of that ear to close that up and so see now my my yarn is coming out the bottom part okay and I still have a long yarn tail because we're going to be using that to sew onto the head okay so I'm going to get finished stitching up this ear and then I will be right back and then I will show you how I'm going to attach them to the head okay okay so I got everything all ready and I've got 
my ears all stitched closed okay with the little folds at the top so now I'm ready to attach the ears to the head okay so starting at the top of the marker where we I placed the marker was where they had it um, in where she had it described on where to put it when she was doing when I was reading the directions or the instructions <laughs> pattern instructions <laughs> okay so I got my uh, pins here now she said in the instructions about sewing the ear onto starting where you marked it then down 14 stitches down in that same row down the side of the head okay so I took my my pin here and I counted 14 stitches down or 14 holes down and put my pin in there and I did that on both sides uh, to mark where the ear is going to fit okay but it's just an approximate approximation if you get it pinned on there and you decide that the ears aren't quite where you want them then you can always shift things a little bit before you um, start uh, sewing it on okay so what I'm going to do is take my ear and of course you want that folded down part toward the front of the head and I'm going to line it up with where that first mark is at the top of the head and I'm going to insert a pin to secure it down okay in fact I think I'm going to insert a couple pins <laughs> okay and then I'm going to curve the ear down and it is going to be kind of flattened toward the front of the face. See how I kind of, it's kind of flattened over. It's made a little dish there. And I'm going to insert pins just to secure it down where I think I'm wanting it to go. Just right down the straight line there. Working my way down to where that point is. But I do not want to, um, you know, you want a... A section of ear hanging down free it's not all the way uh, connected to the head all the way down so if I go all the way down to that mark that pin at the bottom that would be right here I don't have that much uh, uh, ear flap hanging down there loose and so I don't think I'm gonna go down all the way to stitch number 14 I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up to maybe stitch number 12 and yeah I like I think I like that better so I'm going to maybe stop between stitch 12 or maybe 13 which would be going right into there yeah I think I like that better so you just adjust it uh, how, where you think that the ear should sit, okay? And go ahead and if you have plenty of pins, it's always nice to have a whole lot of pins. <laughs> that way you can pin the ear on and then I think I'm going to go ahead and pin the second ear on before I start sewing anything to see if I'm liking where that is going to be going okay so I just I just see a mistake so this is a tips video so make sure you don't make the same mistake that I did can you see my mistake I sewed the flap going the same direction so I have two left ears no right ears I have two right ears <laughs> see that so I made a mistake that is shows you what not to do <laughs> okay so I'm going to fix this I'm going to have to unstitch where I stitched thank goodness I didn't fasten it off too tightly and I'm going to uh, flip my ear over to make sure that I've got that flap going the other direction because this is not right <laughs> so do what I say don't do what I did don't do what I did <laughs> okay I'm gonna fix my mistake and I will be right back <laughs> okay so I restitched my ear all I had to do was unstitch it and fold the the part that was folded down it was on this side I had to fold it over on this side <laughs> so now I have opposite ears okay 
the way I'm supposed to. Okay, so now I'm going to pin down my ear on the other side the same way that I did this, so that way I can look to see if I like the, pla the spacing of it before I stitch anything down. So on this side, I'm going to attach the top of the ear to the part, the top marked, uh, where I have it marked, <laughs> and put a pin through it. I'll put a couple pins through it <laughs> to kind of hold it steady. Okay, I need to reach over here and grab me some more pins. Okay, and then I'm going to start attaching. My, remember, I have it. I have it kind of dished forward um, when I'm putting my pins there. Let me start putting pins in there. And of course, you can always. Um, take the pins out and adjust things if you need to. I'm working my way down and then uh, like I like on this side I raised it up actually I raised it up just one stitch and so I'm going to do that here with my pin that I have marked where I did, marked 14 stitches down I'm going to go up one stitch to 13 I think I like it there better I'm thinking but I'm going to go ahead and attach it so that I can see if that's where I want my ear to end. I'll look at both sides and see if it looks if it looks even. You can even look at it from the back and see if you liked where it is attached. And it looks to me like I have more free on this side than I do on that side. So, let's see here. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, anchor this down just a little bit more at the bottom to get um, the same amount of free low free lobe <laughs> at the bottom is on this side. And it looks pretty good. And as I'm stitching it, I can also kind of adjust it um, a little bit. You just keep kind of keep looking at it to see if the symmetry is is the way you like it, okay? And when you're when you're going to stitch them down, you can also kind of curve the ear around toward the front, you know, instead of it being in a total straight line. Okay. Okay, so I think that's where I want to place my ears. So right now I have the bottom of my yarn. I have the yarn needle still on this one. Um, it, it's coming out the very bottom tip of my ear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that that uh, part there. Let's see, I have a loose stitch right there. Looks like I want to stitch that down. So let me go ahead and do that. Just kind of get that taken care of there. Okay, that looks better. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the ear and kind of we work myself up. You can just take little stitches on, on the edge of the ear there to get myself up to where I actually want to get it to be it's where it's going to be starting to be attached and since it is the same yarn it you shouldn't see or notice uh, any extra stitches taken I need another stitch or two to get up to that point. Oops. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I'm to the point where I want to start uh, attaching it to the head. So I just 
go into the head and up alongside where the ear is and you just kind of take small stitches and uh, just take your time if you get tired <laughs> you can take a break you know because you don't want to rush you want to just kind of take your time um, and kind of shape the ear as you go so then it's right in the place that you're wanting it okay so I'm I am now coming up through the head so I want to come from the underside up through a piece of the ear Oops. Oh. it's one thing I don't like working with a really extra long tail because it seems like it tries to knot up when I'm pulling the stitches through okay Now that time I didn't go through the head, I'm just going through the bottom of the ear, and then I'm going to go into the head to secure it down. You can even whoop, come out through the back side if you need to, to pull, to get those stitches where you want them. Anyway, I'm just doing kind of a whip stitch going through the ear, getting pieces of the ear, and then going through the head. And you work your way all the way up to the top of the ear. I mean, you know, up to the top where you have it marked. Securing that ear down. And then you can uh, take pins out as you get it secured down, if you want to do that, get them out of your way. And if the stitches are too big, you can always do like I've showed in other place, other videos where I'm sewing pieces together where I want to come out a, a, a hole uh, farther away from where I'm stitching just because sometimes making long stitches is easier than making little sh little tiny short stitches so but if you do that then make sure you go back into that same hole and then out close to your work where you need where you're wanting to go so that way you won't see any extra stitches it just goes right back into the body or the head <laughs> of the piece that you're working on you know I usually make my way, my my way up the piece, and then then I'll look at it and see if it needs more stitches, and then I may work my way back down, securing it even further. Uh, but I, this first pass I do uh, is to just um, get the ear attached to the head. See how I'm coming out a, a particular stitch, uh, the stitch hole, so that way I can go back through that hole. Okay, uh, I've got it where I want it, so I think I'm going to go ahead and take this stitch marker off to, to uh, give myself some room there. Okay, so since this is further away from the ear that I want it to be, I go ahead and go back in that hole 
and then come up uh, close to the, you know, in the spot where you're wanting to it actually to be attached, like that, and then down through the head, and you just keep doing that until you get it secured the way uh, the way you're wanting it in the area, the spot that you're wanting it in. Okay, looks pretty good. So I made my way up the ear and now I'm looking and I can see that there's a lot of empty spaces where it didn't get attached and of course all I do now is I just work my way back down um, anchoring down some more some more of those places so I don't have big loose gaps see that big gap right there okay so I'm gonna work on that and get both of these ears sewn on and then that will be f the end of part one of this crochet along. Okay, I got both my ears sewed on. So uh, learn from my mistake and be careful when you're folding the ear down and sewing it. You don't want two identical ears. You need two uh, opposites. <laughs> so then they will uh, be able to be stitched on correctly, okay? <laughs> okay, so there is the head of my Esther the Elephant. I think she is turning out super cute as all of Jess Huff's patterns. I'm so excited to get started on the next part um, as I try to be a week ahead so then I can release a tip video for you. So get started on your elephants and uh, like I said get the head done, get the eyes inserted, the ears done and sewed on and then I will meet you next week on Monday for part two of the crochet along. Okay guys, have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye!